We've all heard about the obesity epidemic that's sweeping the nation, but how big of a problem is it really? Well, a professor from Ohio University School of Applied Health Sciences and Wellness specializes in this area, and she says there are a lot of misconceptions about obesity. She's here with us now to talk about some of these myths. Darlene Berryman, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about obesity just in general to start out. What makes obesity different from being just, say, slightly overweight? Well. The problem with obesity really is about fat tissue and how much fat tissue you have. We usually simply use BMI as an indicator of how much fat tissue, but I want to point out that someone can be classified as overweight but still have too much fat tissue. So it's really about how much fat tissue you have, and there are a number of problems associated with the fat tissue mass a person has. So you gave a talk last month that talked about obesity myths. Can you talk about what some of these common myths are? Well. Obesity, first of all, has a very, I mean, I shouldn't say obesity, adipose tissue has a very important function in the body. So excess amounts cause a lot of problems and a lot of metabolic dysregulation, but also having too little can cause problems as well. There's a condition called lipodystrophy where they have no fat mass and they have almost the exact same metabolic complications that someone is, that is obese has. So having some fat mass is really important. Uh, another common misconception is that where the fat is located in your body makes a difference. So fat under your skin has a lot of positives, whereas fat around your organs have a lot of negatives associated with them. And so we kind of classify fat as one big you know, classification, but really it's, all, it's also about where it is in your body. It sounds pretty interesting. Now let's talk a little bit about your research. You work mostly with animals, is that right? I work with various mouse models that were generated here by John Kopchick's laboratory at Edison Biotech. So how can you use the information you get with mice models and apply that to human beings? Well, John's lab has generated models with varying levels of growth hormone action. And growth hormone is an interesting molecule when it comes to adipose tissue because growth hormone decreases the amount of adipose tissue, but it also promotes diabetes. So John has generated models with various levels of growth hormone action, and those models have can be lean, but very unhealthy and die young. And then he's got a mouse model that has no growth hormone action that's obese and is one of the longest lived mouse models on record. So what he's done with these mouse models is he's generated a healthy fat situation. And so a lot of my research is looking at how, what is it about adipose tissue that causes all the metabolic dysregulation by using this model system that's healthy and fat. So just briefly, what are some things people can do to try to fight this obesity epidemic? There's a lot of things that they can do, but one simple thing for them to keep in mind is there's no magic pill. There's no one you know, bona fide uh, wave that works for everyone, but it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit challenging because we have a lot more to learn about mm -hmm. obesity and adipose tissue. It's not as simple as we used to think, and so we need to learn more to know a little bit more about how to combat it, but simple exercise and, and eating right and modestly is a good way to start. Sounds like good information. Yeah. All right, thank you for joining us You're tonight. Welcome.